Hi, so my name is Linda Franz. I have a little bit of a cold, so my voice doesn't always sound like this, but I grew up in a small town in southeastern Idaho called Montpelier, and I loved growing up there. I grew up in a home with seven kids, um, three older and three younger. I'm right in the middle. My dad was a small engine repairman. He owned his own business, and my mom was a stay-at-home mom. As a family, we weren't um, really close emotionally, as a family, we did a lot of things together. We went camping a lot and we um, we went on family vacations every summer, but I don't have a lot of memories of us sitting around talking and visiting and sharing thoughts and feelings together. Um, but my parents are good people. They taught us a lot of good values and they sacrificed a lot and did a lot to, to raise us. And I appreciate that about them. Um, so here's my mission statement, if you'll forgive me. I'm going to just read it. It says, we will work, play, serve, hike, and laugh together. We know that a good marriage comes from the strength and character of the individuals that make up that marriage. Therefore, we strive to increase faith and righteousness and personal character. We believe that God is an equal partner in our marriage, and we involve him in all that we do. As individuals, we are positive and seek for the good. We strive for the companionship of the Holy Ghost. We also support one another in worthwhile pursuits, development of talents, and uplifting hobbies outside of marriage. As a couple, we act as a team. We counsel together. We make decisions together. We move forward when we are both on the same page. We are safe to share thoughts, feelings, desires, fears, and concerns without being judged. And we use wisdom in sharing those things that will be most helpful and useful. We repent and forgive each other. We tolerate imperfections and inconsistencies and focus on the things we appreciate about each other. When problems arise, we listen to each other and strive to understand each other's point of view. We strive to be selfless and desire what is right more than being right. We, we are patient with one another. We avoid criticizing and instead pray for inspiration and pray for each other. We also do all we can to be helpful and not hurtful. So I feel like this vision is realistic. It recognizes that good communication is critical to the success of the marriage and acknowledges that both spouses need to have positive behaviors and attitude in order to nurture love. It also states that growth and happiness come from focusing on the positive things in the marriage and in each other. This vision, while making the marriage the highest priority, also makes allowances for personal development by pursuing hobbies and developing talents outside of the marriage. The vision, this vision makes it clear that marriage is a 100% effort from both spouses. Um, you can't just say it's a 50-50 because that um, that looks different. 100% um, every circumstance requires different things from the spouse. Both spouses need to make the marriage their first priority and give their best. But that best is going to vary from time to time and from circumstance to circumstance. Um, different circumstances will require different things from each spouse. When sickness or trials come, they take special consideration and adjustment from both spouses. So working together does not mean doing the same job, but working on the same problem together and each doing their part to solve the problem. We just don't leave one person to solve the problems all by themselves. And I feel like the marriage vision did address the reality of personal weakness. It did so by stating the need for repentance, forgiveness, tolerance, and a reminder to focus on the good. So when we focus on what we admire in our spouse, um, that helps us be more patient. When we see our spouse's weaknesses, then love will motivate us to be helpful and not criticize them. We can pray for them and pray to know how to help. And we can use our strengths to counter where they fall short. And we can lean on them and their strengths when we are weak without feeling less or unworthy. Um, this kind of cooperation increases gratitude for each other and helps us recognize how much strength we gain from marriage and um, how much more we are when we're together. Um, next is forgiveness. So we need forgiveness. Forgiveness cannot be overstated in marriage. Forgiveness invites the power of Christ into the marriage and it allows him to make up the difference and allows the couple to continue striving together for perfection. Forgiveness also helps each spouse feel safe to make mistakes and to be vulnerable. It helps strengthen faith in each other and it fosters growth. Um, repentance also invites Christ into the marriage as we recognize our need for the atonement of Jesus Christ and for forgiveness. Repentance demonstrates a desire <coughs> excuse me, to change and be better. Tolerance is necessary because as humans, 
We have different personalities. We have different interests. We come from different backgrounds and different experiences. Tolerance nurtures acceptance, respect, and appreciation for our differences. Without tolerance, the things that we once loved about our spouse can become annoying or a topic of contention. But tolerance, with tolerance, we allow our spouse to be themselves and we value those things that make them unique. And we wouldn't want them to be just like us anyway. So thank you. That's my marriage vision.